But I do want to go down to the spectra underneath the compounds, the spectra. Now, one of the tools that Open Lab CDS has available to it, if you activate this as a tool, is when you're doing spectral analysis, 3D analysis, the software can help you decide whether or not a particular peak has some co-eluting sub-processes underneath it or sub-spectra um, underneath it that might make you think it is not necessarily pure. Now, the software in and of itself will never tell you that something is pure or not pure. That's going to be because that is a, a context-sensitive type of determination. And you, based on your experience, your SOPs, the definitions that are put in place, it is incumbent upon a person, a chemist, a manager, et cetera, to make that qualified leap as to whether or not something is pure or impure. What the software will do, however, is it will put together a comparison of spectra across an entire algorithm and tell you whether or not the, it's meeting that algorithm specification or not meeting that specification. So one of the ways that we can do that is through some color coding as well as some uh, numerical values. So we need to activate that in our software. Immediately in the chromatograms window, the very, very last icon in the chromatograms window is a little gear. I want you to click on that little gear for me, please. That's going to open up the chromatographic properties. And one of the things that we need to activate here is the ability to view this type of spectral analysis. So once that chromatographic properties window is opened up, select annotations on the left-hand side. It's the very, very last item that is there. And you'll see on the right-hand side, it says in the very last item to show UV slash MS peak check results annotations. That's currently deselected. I want you to select that checkbox there, and it will put a little checkbox inside of that box, and then select OK. So immediately after activating that particular annotation, we now have to tell it to turn on the impurity check. So immediately to the right of the compound table tab, go to the UV impurity check. And you'll see that our UV impurity is currently set to none. I want to make sure that it's set to all peaks instead. Now, I could do just the identified peaks. That's fine. That means it will take any of the named peaks and it will uh, qualify those named peaks. But in this particular case, I'd like to do the named and unnamed peaks just in case. Then, with that selected to all peaks, I'm going to right mouse click on my sample on the left hand side, go to the second item, select reprocess selected injection, and you'll notice that uh, some yeah, green and red bars have appeared below each one of the integrated peaks. Now, the green bar indicates that the algorithm has matched up all of the spectra, and it appears that all of those spectra match up perfectly. The red one means that at least one, if not multiple, spectra do not exactly line up on one another. So you have to make a determination as to whether or not something is going to match your uh, purity algorithms. Now, if I go back to the compound table tab, you'll notice that the impurity sensitivity is set to 50. Now, it's set to 50 because that is pretty much an industry standard right now. And again, if you'd like to know what exactly that means, what that 50 corresponds to, you can easily go to the Open Lab CDS Health and Learning, and that will give you an, an understanding as to what that impurity sensitivity is and what its setting should be. But let's say that I'm doing, uh, in my analysis, I am not convinced that 50 is an appropriate sensitivity to be placing on each one of my peaks. Well, the software has a really good way of being able to actually determine that for you instead. So if I select that impurity sensitivity column, then right mouse click on it, 
one of the options that I get is to calculate the sensitivity for all of my compounds. I'm going to click on that second to last one, calculate the sensitivity for all my compounds. It might give you a little bit of a warning message. It says that calculate sensitivity for compounds, that not all the results are available. You need to reprocess, reprocess the loaded injections again, then retry. You can simply click OK to that particular message. That's perfectly fine. But you should then see that the impurity sensitivity values have changed in that column. Notice that many of them have been reset to 99. So for instance, the rich one is 99. The peak at 5.069 is 99, et cetera. Now some of them have been drastically lowered. And specifically, I'm going to look at that peak at 8.811 minutes. That says that if I put the impurity sensitivity at six, then it would line up and make all of the, uh, the spectra turn green. Whether or not that's an appropriate value, depending upon what um, industry you're in, depending upon your applications, is completely up to you as the chemist that's doing this analysis. But now that these impurity sensitivities have been reestablished or their default threshold values have been reestablished based on looking at each one of these peaks, if I right mouse click on that sample on the left hand side and reprocess the selected injections, you'll notice that that injection has all green bars underneath it, under each and every one of those integrated peaks. Now, what if I don't agree with that uh, 8.811 impurity sensitivity being at six? Uh, my impurity sensitivity has to have a threshold value, let's say of at least 25. So I can change that impurity sensitivity back to 25 for my 8.811 minute peak. Again, reprocess that selected injection on the left-hand side, and it will correspondingly show me that it's not going to meet that criteria, 25. If it was set to six, it would meet it, but anything above that is not going to meet the uh, spectral purity or sensitivity for the impurity. 